places from through. In fact, put it this way: people who help with the witnesses. Oh, right, fair and, and so I can't do that in detail. Well, but that's I, why, in broad terms, I'm asking the question. Yeah, we, we, we'll get a question to, to the court officers just to the degree to which domestic witnesses <coughs> find themselves in the specialist court. In fact, it, it's such an issue, it's such a matter of concern for me. Domestic abuse has always been, throughout my working life, I, I've had an awareness of the, the problems that, that particularly women face in some circumstances. And uh, when we were creating the Protecting Vulnerable People's Board, which sort of sits over here, the, the, the Criminal Justice Board considered whether which of its subgroups ought to migrate to sit under the Protecting Vulnerable People's auspices so that we didn't duplicate effort. This was the one area that I felt very strongly the courts and the criminal justice process needed to stay really focused on making sure that victims of violence got justice as often as we could deliver it. Uh, that being so, we have a uh, specialist, no, we have a strategic domestic violence subgroup of the Criminal Justice Board and there is also a domestic abuse subgroup of the PDP, of the forum. I keep forgetting what name it is, just in, whatever, it is, whatever it is at the moment. So I would want to be sure that the criminal justice system is working <coughs> properly and I will ask and I just will take it back and ask that question. Sure. Thank you. Right. I'm conscious of time, are there any further questions? Mm -hmm. No? Are uh, you satisfied with the progress being made to deliver the police compliant and compliant <coughs> priorities? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> a general item for... Oh, this is the one that I have uh, inadvertently we've commented on earlier. Okay, this, this is my routine process. I, I inherited it from the police authority, then it was called sustaining excellence, now it's called a community first programme. And it is the way in which the force asks every element of its work to be reviewed through a, through a process of two or three years to ensure that if there are any savings to be made, they can be saved, taken, without the service being too badly damaged. On the 1st of February, I approved five Tier 1 business cases. So they come to me after a process, for those of you that aren't aware, they, they start off with uh, the, the service area being identified up for review. Within that service area, subject matter experts are then agreed. So in agreement with the trade unions and the staff associations. And those subject matter experts then engage with managers and supervisors to look at the processes within that uh, review area. After that, it goes through a number of other reviews, including close scrutiny by the trade unions and the staff associations. And when it finally comes to me at stage five, the, uh, the aim is that any disagreements are happening resolved before a business case is presented to me. So it comes to me at stage five and I consider it and we get the opportunity to review everything within the business case and it's often very operational. Um, and then, if there is agreement around the table, I will generally accept the recommendations of the business case. That then allows, we, we normally have a cooling off period and if there is a dispute at stage five, it, may, it allows me the opportunity to say, if you can't agree on it, this isn't going anywhere, so go away. You've got four, four weeks to go away and review it and see if you can arrive at an agreement. And then it comes back to me. Uh, and, and then at stage six, I have to sit and act as provider judgment for Solomon if there's a dispute. But very rarely is a dispute. Now, we then, um, so let's take the five different areas there. You may want to ask me questions about each of those five. Mm. Um, the business cases are <coughs> not subject to publication yet because in some of those areas there will be staff who are affected who have to be consulted under the normal rules of employment. Three months consultation if their jobs are at risk of, of being deleted. 
And so the fours always say, please don't publish even the executive summaries until that process of cons formal consultation with the trade unions has taken place. Um, which then leaves you in the position, well, you've recorded the decision, why can't we see the details of that decision? So that's the, that's the, um, the problem. It's really, I've, I've got the update there for you. These five areas of review, custody, corporate support department, professional standards department on the anti-corruption unit, the homicide support unit, and matrix were all reviewed. The result was we've been able to find £1.8 million pounds of, of savings. It tells you how many police officer posts, 14 police officer posts, and 13 staff posts. Um, the one area really that I need some guidance from you on is, what do I do with this challenge around giving you as much information as we can without compromising staff details? Um, and, but there might be questions that you have about the three areas of consultation as well. Yeah, I, th I think in terms of the, the, what, what the Commission has highlighted there in terms of there being a gap, you know, a time lag yeah. in terms of uh, what's available to the, to, 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 to the panel. And clearly the, the Commission is under an obligation to publish your decisions in a timely, in a timely manner. If those decisions are made, then they, they should be published as soon as they're made. The supporting documentation, I think, is the issue, isn't yes. it? Yes, it's, you it's, can't it's, make a judgment. It, 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 in, in, in order for the panel to be able to play an effective role in that period of consultation and to at least present some challenge, which doesn't necessarily have to happen within the bounds of a public meeting, it, it, it could be the stuff that panel members are being made aware yeah. of your decisions that they're made. Maybe there is something that's just been suggested to explore in terms of what could be made exclusively available to the panel members under the condition of confidentiality, bearing in mind the, 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 the nature of the material that potentially would be shared. If that's what members feel it would be helpful for us to go away and have a, have a conversation with the Commissioner's Office about. Should we try and resolve it and come back with it? Yeah. Yeah. Agenda item five is a question. These are collaborations. Um, I, last year we did discuss the issue of collaborations and I undertook to revisit this periodically. I, in the report, I've outlined those collaborations in which either Merseyside or or I am involved <coughs> and in which they're currently governed. Just, uh, more sensitively, I am also involved with uh, national specialist capabilities groups. Uh, and a delivery board. This is a multi-agency collaboration across local, regional and national networks to identify and reduce the threat of organised crime. There are also regional collaborations which uh, we engage in, uh, including the counter-terrorism services, the regional organised crime units, the motorway, um, regional motorway patrol network and others, um, which uh, from time to time we report to you on. Uh, there are local partnership groups in Merseyside. Uh, we've discussed the Criminal Justice Board, the, Criminal, the Community Safety Partnership, and the, uh, protect, the Protecting Vulnerable People's Forum. Um, I I've chaired the Criminal Justice Board since 2013. I am quite pleased, more than quite pleased, with the progress of this board. When, we, when I took over the board, there was a clear sign from the government that they wanted them all to pay the work. And here on Merseyside, the criminal justice agencies felt that there was sufficient benefit to them from keeping the criminal justice board going, that we sustained it and maintained it, and whatever difficulties we've had over the funding we have resolved, um, now all other parts of the country and other policing areas are re coming back and reinvigorating their criminal justice boards. So, um, in fact, the government are now saying, why don't you all chair your criminal justice boards? Uh, just sitting quietly at the back, feeling quite smug. So um, that's a, a good news story. Um, I also maintained the multi-agency community safety partnership. Um, that had originally been funded when the, uh, I think what it was called, Crime and Disorder Act 2000, 
school, I think it was, something like that, uh, it was passed. It created from the state of partnership. 1988. Was it 1988? There you go. Um, uh, and that, I think, works. It has mixed benefits. I think there is a, a concern that it sometimes um, duplicates certainly the people sitting around the table. But we keep that under review. I know that um, community safety partnership leads and lead councillors in local authorities find the community safety partnership a benefit. It's the only forum at which they all meet together. And if for no other benefit than that, that networking opportunity, the sharing of best practice, it has some value. The uh, Protecting Vulnerable People's Forum is a combined authority partnership group. Um, it includes participants from the NHS, local authorities, the fire service, and the police um, across the whole the five local authority, six local authority areas of the new mayoral area, the, the, the region. But it also uh, reports <coughs> about, the, the report you've got talks about the fire and rescue authority, of which I am now a member for my sins, <laughs> and appendix A itemises some of the more operational functions, and I have touched on some of them. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to ask. Yeah, can I just mention, yeah, just, a, just mentioned the uh, Fire and Rescue Committee. And I noticed that the, um, <coughs> the last scheduled meeting was on the 19th of May. There's nothing on the website, is there, about it? And, you know, I'm just wondering uh, where we are in regard to this collaboration. Is the joint committee? Is that the joint collaboration? Yes, the joint collaboration, yes. To be honest, the committee meets, meets on an ad hoc basis. It doesn't meet on a regular basis. It meets as and when there is business to discuss. Last May, we were considering the report that had been commissioned uh, inviting Deloitte to report, to, to do a study of uh, the back office, the uh, potential shared services, so uh, human resources, uh, uh, administration of the, of the fire authority, to see whether we could save money across the fire authority and the police. I think the conclusion was that there weren't that many savings to be made. Collaboration is still ongoing, at, particularly at an operational level, and that's progressing very well. But the Joint Committee doesn't necessarily need no. to discuss that. No, if I may add, yeah, one of the background to the, uh, the committee, the, the, uh, Commissioner of Towns along with Chief Constable. Um, there's a Blue Line co Collaboration Board and a Corporate Service Review Board, which are the operational leads from uh, three organisations, Animal Service, Fire Service and the Police. Uh, and I represent the Commissioner along with the, the, Chief, the Deputy Chief Constable of Towns. So the work in the background is very much ongoing. Um, the ten items that the Commissioner referred to regarding the Corporate Service Review are they reviewed individually. Uh, unfortunately, because of contractual arrangements between the fire services and some of the providers, um, we were not able to engage to the depth that uh, Deloitte recommended, but nevertheless, the work is still there. It's still there. It's very much alive. In fact, the last meeting of, of the, uh, those two previous boards was the 24th of January, so they will report to uh, the authority. Agenda item 6. I have to say there have been no developments yet in terms of changes to complaints responsibilities. Very happy to say that. And that it will come. Uh, but I believe all other actions are at the same time. I just have one. Was the event successful? And what was the level of attendance like? Uh, is this the solar campus? Mm -hmm. That's right. It was very, very successful. Um, there have been further movements around the NASH as it's organised, um, but I think it's the, the world's stance on this is really um, to be commended, and the commitment in terms of maintaining staff in the NASH is exemplary. But all of the NASHs around the NASH are functioning pretty well. We keep them under constant review. Uh, they perform a really, really critical role <coughs> in safeguarding the most vulnerable people, particularly the children. Um, 
So yeah, it was good. It was good enough. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further queries? Okay. So do we have another response to provide? to agenda item 7, which Keith is going to present. Okay, the report provides will take the establishment of the National Association of Fishing Corps and and how the development has progressed over the past 15 years. The way we're looking at the moment is that in September 2017, Fishing Corps and Carols have been that set up a special interest group within the LGA as the most sensible option uh, establishing the National Association of Fishing Corps and Carols, which ensure that it can be set up quite quickly and um, also um, immediate support for the hand during the establishment. A steering group, which was made up of volunteer panel members and support officers from various panels across the country, um, were tasked with developing an online framework for how the special interest group would operate, which is detailed on page 127 on the agenda. Um, framework was circulated by Stephen Billy prior to Christmas and was shared with Councillor Thomas and Councillor Shaw early in January. Um, Councillor Shaw and Councillor Thomas both felt that it would be appropriate to seek the panel members' views on this framework at this meeting, at the next available meeting, which is, which is this meeting. Um, Councillor Thomas and Councillor Shaw did ask for clarification on a couple of issues, and they are detailed on page 129 of the agenda. Um, and the issues that were highlighted were around voting rights, membership and the location of meetings. Um, a response was sent by the steering group, which is on page 131 of the agenda, in relation to those issues. And in general terms, there's nothing has been set in stone as yet, and all these issues will be firmed up at the inaugural meeting of the special interest group. Um, at, at this moment in time, there's no actual date being set as yet for this inaugural meeting. So really we're just asking members if you've got any views or comments on what's being proposed. Um, any views? Having attended the um, consultation in I think it was October, I can't remember that. Uh, um, when the proposal was put and generally agreed by those present. Uh, I think this is the right way forward, it's the best way to do it, but also keep cost it to a, to a minimum. Uh, I thought for one moment when we were talking before about £20,000 contribution to being part of the Association of Police Commissioners, we might be faced with the same, but no, we're talking 200 plus um, from panels, and I think that is manageable and um, extent. Um, I'm still very concerned at the end of the day if you're talking about two per panel being part of a group that is essentially ends up being about 80 people, which is a bit crazy to say the least. The other factor is A, I um, have no problem with chair and deputy chair representing the uh, panel, but I made the point in, in, in October to the then chair of the, of the meeting that there needs to be an independent voice within the group. Now in the main, that would mean if you're self-chair and deputy chair, that voice would not be heard. 
although people will have received the report I gave to the um, following the October session, which actually does show that I think there were four uh, panels in the country where an independent member is either chair or deputy chair. That could mean the independent <coughs> voice is there, but I would still be concerned that it is there within the, the gathering. I still think two per panel is a very large number to manage and to actually achieve anything. And the worry that I have, because of the conversations that took place in October, is whether it's intended that this body has real influence and real say and real confidence in getting the views of panels across to the people that matter. So I felt there was a, a weakness in, in sort of saying, yes, we want it, but really we're not going to do much. And I don't think see the point in setting something up if it doesn't achieve realistically what it sets out to do. So I was supportive of being set up. I would look to more clear aims or objectives um, and to make sure that it's, it's managed in, a, in an effective way. to raise the concerns that you develop on a local level to influence national policy. And I suppose that's where these things come into their own. Um, the proof that was in the pudding, whether you're able to do that, um, you know, it, it also depends on things like political balance compared to the, the, the government at the time, etc. Um, and, you know, however, from a local authority perspective, I think <coughs> our learning has been when you've got issues like national funding formulas, um, there, there is a strength working collectively and collaboratively to try and influence that rather than them receiving 80, 80 individual response, responses. Uh, you know, but, but I think I, I would agree Keith's, um, Keith's advice that the proof is at the bottom of these things. They've got to be active governance um, to, 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 to show their work. Agree with Justin. Um, I think it's a case of um, entrusting to your chair, <coughs> and vice chair, um, the, the opportunity to feed some of those concerns in and be part of that conversation and, and, and see to press home the message around this needs to be something that is active and is doing something that is, is worthwhile for whatever the, the, the subscription that will be requested and to make sure that that is money well spent. So, are there any further queries or issues with it? So, are we happy with the proposed options um, that's detailed in the report um, to take forward the establish, um, establishment of a national association for the police and crime panel, a special interest group? Chair, is this going to be set up in June or July? The, the, there's no indication at this stage, at this stage in terms of the meeting. Um, We're hoping it's going to be at the end of February or beginning of March. But we'll keep we'll keep members involved in terms of any dates being identified, even though it'll be the chair and vice chair subject to your agreement. That the, 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 the notion was that it would be constitutionally in place as it were. As far as the LGA was concerned, it remained formless. Can, can we now agree that myself and Councillor Shaw will be the uh, panel representatives? Thank you. And that concludes today's meeting. Thank you all for your attendance.